we talked a lot about you know what do patients with vasculitis want, and one of the big things they want is effective treatments. But if you take a step back, what does the big picture want for patients with vasculitis? Well, they want to understand what caused their disease, and they want a cure. And so what I'm about to tell you is actually a, what we have identified in the last year, which is a new cause or a new factor that can cause vasculitis that we hope will lead to cure in, in many patients. Um, and in order to explain this to you, I'm gonna have to take a step back and talk to you a little bit about your bone marrow. So I hope you will indulge me and follow with along with me on this, uh, and I will eventually tell you how it relates back to vasculitis. Um, so inside of our bones, we have bone marrow, and there are cells in there, and particularly there is a, a magical cell, if you will, called a stem cell. And stem cells inside your bone marrow make all of your blood. All of the billions of red and white blood cells that get released from inside of your bones and then circulate through your arteries and veins. These stem cells are kind of magical because they are self-renewing. You have about 10 to 30,000 of these inside your bone marrow and they survive forever and they can self-replicate. Uh, um, and what happens is over time, these stem cells can become damaged. So think about your skin, for example. If you have a cell in your skin and it gets exposed to harmful UV light from the sun, it can damage the genetic code or the DNA of that skin cell, and it can induce a mutation. And that mutation can cause that cell in your skin to grow and grow and grow, and that's what constitutes a cancer. Um, and the same process, uh, what would happen, for example, in your skin, also can happen in your bone marrow. So just as we get older and we're subject to stresses and our body changes, so do our stem cells inside of our bone marrow. And these cells can randomly, over time, acquire mutations that make them different than they were originally intended to be. So on the right, you see this group of stem cells. Let's say that one of these stem cells acquires a mutation because it was subject to some sort of stress as shown with the blue dot. Now this cell is different. It starts to behave different. Under normal circumstances, the hope is that the rest of the cells in your bone marrow can control this cell. They can eliminate it, get rid of it um, because it ha now has a mutation. And that's what often happens. We actually know this from tracking stem cells in healthy people, is that these cells every 10 years or so will undergo a mutation or two, but your bone marrow takes care of itself. Let's suppose, however, that you took care of that mutation, but another one popped up in a different cell. And what if the gene that was mutated inside this yellow cell gave that cell an advantage over the rest of the stem cells in your bone marrow. So that cell could start to replicate and divide and take over your bone marrow. Now, what if that cell produced blood, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, but it was producing it from a mutated state? so that the blood cells that were produced were just a little bit off. What if those cells were angry and those cells were what caused inflammation in the body? Now you may say this sounds a bit far-fetched, but actually we're quite familiar with this concept because this is what a leukemia is. If you have a stem cell in your bone marrow and it acquires a mutation over time and that gives it a growth advantage and that cell takes over, you have a cancer in your blood or a leukemia. And what we have now found at the NIH is an acquired mutation in a particular gene in a bone marrow stem cell that causes vasculitis. It doesn't cause a leukemia and it causes a vasculitis that starts in older people. So this is a way in which your genetics can cause disease late in life. And we talk a lot that vasculitis traditionally is not a genetic disease. What we mean by that is it's not a disease that's passed down from one generation to the next. So it's not in your sperm cells or in your ovaries where you can give it to your children. 
But what we have found is that genetics can play a role in vasculitis because cells can acquire mutations over time and those mutations can cause problems. So we identified this mutation in a stem cell in bone marrow of patients that had vasculitis. And what's really cool is these patients were diagnosed with many different kinds of vasculitis. Some of them had polyarteritis nodosa, some of them even had giant cell arteritis, and they looked like cases of polyarteritis nodosa. They looked like giant cell arteritis, but really it was this genetic mutation hiding within those patients um, that really defined them. So not every patient with giant cell arteritis may have this particular mutation, and not every patient with polyarteritis nodosa would have this mutation. In fact, we expect it to be the minority, but it's really important that we screen patients with these diseases and find these kinds of mutations. And it's possible we found a mutation in one particular gene in a bone marrow stem cell, but you have 30,000 genes in your body, and we expect that mutations in other genes in the bone marrow are probably also causing different forms and types of vasculitis. Why is this really important? It's important because we could actually target these bad cell populations and eradicate them and hopefully cure disease. So the disease that I'm talking about has a name and it's called Vexus. And currently we are trying to get uh, the first publication from this so that it will be out in the medical community. But I think what it represents is we have now found a new way in which genetics can cause vasculitis. And I think this is gonna unlock different ways to treat and even potentially cure vasculitis.